So on this channel, I'm often talking about the importance of printing your work, just getting your images off the screen and into your hands. And one of the ways that I did this over the last year is just with this little Canon selfie printer, which turned out to be like a really cost-effective way to make these small work prints, which then gives you the ability to just lay it all out in front of you, see the work as a whole, play with pairs and sequences and things like that. And as the projects I'm working on start to develop and get a bit more serious, specifically the work up in North Wales, I have wanted to do something like a bit more permanent and bigger, giving like the selects from the project a place to live as it grows, as a way to view these images somewhere else rather than just a Lightroom catalog. So in this video, I've partnered up with Whitewall, who's a fine art print lab out of Germany, just with like the goal or the idea of setting out to make like a medium sized print portfolio box for this project and just sharing the entire process with you. And I hope at the very least, this just inspires you to get out there and print your work in whichever way suits you best. So Slate City is a project that I've been working on for the past few years in North Wales, and this was born out of a number of trips to the area and quite simply just falling in love with the environment, but also being incredibly intrigued by the history of the slate industry and the impact that it's had on the landscape. And making work for Slate City has been quite a bit different than my last project in American Mile. Uh, with that one, I made images over quite a long period of time and then it's almost as if uh, a project was kind of formed or pulled from that afterwards. Whereas with this one, I'd say I have like a pretty clear idea or understanding uh, right from the start of where I wanna go with things, which has given me like a bit of a different opportunity to go and do things like this that we're doing today. So right now I still have a really long way to go with Slate City, very much kind of in its infancy, but. I will say I'm at a point right now where I feel like I have a pretty solid base of work that I'm confident for the most part will end up in the project when it's finished. And there's 15 of these images that I've considered selects for this project. But I also know for sure, you know, with long-term work, things change and you start to view them differently over time. And then you also get new ideas as you make work different creative directions or you know different ideas. So for the most part, I feel really good about these 15, but I also know that there's a potential one or two or three of them or however many might not end up in the project when it's finished. So after choosing the selects, the first thing I had to do was find a paper that I wanted to use for this project. Um, as I mentioned, partnered up with Whitewall for this video. If you don't know who they are, they're a fine art printing lab based out of Germany. I've actually been using them for like a pretty long time now, dating back to my landscape photography days, uh, and I've always been really happy with the results. They have a huge variety of printing and display methods to choose from, just like really high quality professional papers tasteful display methods and framing. They have a lot of helpful things like the ability to make proof prints or order sample packs for choosing papers and finishes. And then they also offer things like ICC profiles for proofing at home. So happy to recommend them. Um, if you're interested in checking them out, I'll put a link below, which will give you 10% off uh, any order that you place. So one of the videos that I did with Whitewall last year was basically like a big fine art paper test where I think I tested uh, 10 different fine art papers for black and white and color. So I already had like a pretty good idea of what I liked best. Uh, my favorite from that video was the Hanamule fine art Beretta paper. And I was tempted to just go with that, but they did add a, a couple new selections to their website since then. But like I said, they do offer these sample packs on their website. And this is really cool. They have like a bunch of pre-made ones. So I went ahead just for fun and ordered a black and white pack. And this one has a bunch of different fine art papers that are in these little sleeves. But then they also come with a bunch of different display and mounting methods. And then you can actually go and build your own sample packs. So you can choose all the different papers or display methods you're interested in. So this is pretty cool and you know definitely a good way to get a feel for the different offerings. But uh, for this one, I really wanted to just choose one of my images and go and submit it for these specific papers I was interested in. So the first paper choice that I went with was the Hanamule Fine Art Brita, as mentioned. And what I love about this paper is it has like a very nice weight to it and quite an aggressive texture, certainly the most 
out of all the Beretta papers that I chose. And it's also quite bright as well. I found this paper does a really good job handling those subtle tone changes. Uh, this image here, this was shot on four by five large format and this foreground and kind of middle ground area, there's a lot of those kind of subtleties here with the slate and even this dark rock face here. And I found that, you know, this held up really well, you know, proofing properly and just setting the image up before sending for print. Uh, it really looks great. So this is one of the reasons that I've enjoyed this paper specifically for this project because like my worst fear is I send away uh, some of this work and I get back prints where you know these areas block up and you kind of lose a lot of what working with a format like 4x5 uh, brings with it. So the second paper that I went with and I was very curious about is another Hanamule Brita paper. And this one's new to Whitewall. It's called the Photo Silk X. And this claims that it has a higher D-Max than the last paper. So I was curious to see if that would display an even wider tonal range. And right away with this, one of the first things I noticed is that uh, the weight isn't as heavy as the Hanamule that we just checked out. And it's definitely not as bright. So this has like a warmer tone uh, overall, which is actually quite nice, but Despite having a claimed higher D-Max, I will say I actually like the look of this Hanamule paper better. It seems like the blacks are a little bit more rich. Uh, and then finish wise, definitely like nowhere near as aggressive. This is very much uh, just like a silk finish. It doesn't really have uh, much of that uh, typical like Beretta look to it. A little bit if you start to look close. But you know, overall a nice paper, I will say, these differences are quite subtle. It probably is gonna be a bit difficult to see on the video here, but still this isn't one that I could ever see myself choosing uh, over that last paper we checked out. For number three, I chose a paper from Canson, which is called the Beretta Prestige 2. And this one is heavier than that first Hanamule, coming in at 340 GSM, and uh, it also quickly won me over. So this paper is quite a bit less bright than the first Hanamule. I think that one was 103% uh, brightness. This one's 88. So when you look at it, it does have this really nice warm tone to it that I enjoy quite a bit. And this has a little bit higher claimed D-Max. And I will say it did a really, really nice job with those subtle tone changes. The blacks seem just a little bit richer. Uh, so, you know, for this work that I'm doing, obviously a huge selling point. And then texture wise, a little bit more understated than that first Beretta we checked out, but still a bit of texture to it. Uh, so I quite like it. So yeah, I didn't expect to like this paper as much as I did, but this one, like I said, quickly won me over. And this in the end is the one that I decided to go with for this body of work. But I think both of these, the Canton and that first Hanamule, are probably two of my favorite papers that I've ever printed with. And I'd highly recommend them for either black and white or color. They're really, really nice. So now that I had my paper choice, the next thing was to pick a size to print and also find a portfolio box. So I will say I found this was one of those things that was like a little bit difficult to gauge without actually having like the print size in hand. Um, I knew that I did want to do something that was big enough so it kind of brought the images to life. It was a little something more than say like a small four by six work print that I was doing on the Canon selfie. Uh, but still not too big to the point where it's like awkward and you have to hold the image, you know, way away to kind of view it as a whole. So the image size that I ended up with was 16 by 20, which is exactly what these test prints were. And this is total image size with the white border. And I was quite happy with this. I feel like you can still hold it in two hands and it's comfortable enough where you can view the image in its entirety without having to, like I said, go and pin it up somewhere else. So the next thing to do was to go and source out a portfolio box. And these come in all sorts of different sizes, I think all the way down to eight by 10. So you do have options, but I ended up getting one from a company here in the UK called Preservation Equipment. And, you know, super straightforward. This is like a nice black cloth exterior, and then it opens up to lay flat. And then the interior is uh, white acid free just for like archival purposes. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but just a nice way to uh, store and display a body of work. I think this one was like 45 pounds. I'm sure you could find these for cheaper if you uh, weren't worried about it being archival. Uh, but yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, I will say though, after getting this and choosing my print size, part of me now thinks I may have actually gone with a different size if I could do this again, but I'll talk about that a little bit uh, at the end of the video. 
Okay, so next up, I'm gonna share my process for prepping these images for print. We're just gonna take a look at one of them. Um, I did a video on the channel last year where I go into detail, kind of step by step, sharing my process uh, for doing this. So I recommend checking that out. But I figured at the very least, I'd show you with one of these, the steps I took somewhat quickly uh, just to get to the point with the prints that we're gonna look at next. So if you watched that video last year, you know, skip ahead of this if you'd like, but I figured it could be interesting for some people. So uh, we're here in Lightroom, and what I'm gonna do is we'll grab this image here. This is from the test prints, and we're gonna hit uh, Command E and go out to Photoshop. Um, I do all my print prep in Photoshop. You could, of course, do this a, a number of different ways, but this is just how I've done it over the years, so it's kind of what I stick with. And the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna size this. So the nice thing with these uh, prints is they're 16 by 20 and all of this work was shot on four by five, like I said, or GFX or a little bit of medium format. So these are big files and we aren't gonna run into any issues where we have to like upsize them. Uh, if anything, we're gonna be downsizing all of these to get them to that 16 by 20 print size. So we'll go image, image size. And the first thing I wanna do is set my resolution right here. So just by standard, it's set to 240 and if we go here to Whitewall's website, the nice thing is, is they tell you the DPI that they're gonna print your images at. So this is really useful information, obviously, because when you're sizing, uh, in this case, I know they're gonna print at 300 DPI. So that's gonna give me my figure here for my resolution. That's the first thing I'm gonna set. And then I'm gonna go up here to the width, it's set to inches. We're doing a 16 by 20, uh, like I said, but I want an inch and a half white border on either side, so a total of three inches. So take that off, it's gonna give us a width of 17 inches and I'll just let height kind of fall wherever it falls to keep the dimensions correct. And we'll go and hit okay. So now this is down to our 17 inch print size. I'm gonna go up to image, canvas size, change this to inches, and I'm now gonna set this to 20 by 16, which is the total paper size. Hit okay. Now this is to size. We got our border. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at sharpening. So I'll go into 100%. And since we downsized, um, and since this was already a pretty detailed image to begin with, it looks pretty good. Um, if you watch that other video of mine where I'm upsizing images, that's where you start to get into uh, like a little bit of uh, heavier sharpening. So this one actually looks pretty good. And all that I would do is maybe just add a little bit of sharpening to bring out some fine detail. So I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate my layer here. And the first type of sharpening that I always do is high pass. So we'll set this new layer, this duplicate layer over here to overlay. And then we're gonna go up here to filter other high pass. And right away, this is gonna be set to usually where I end up around one. It's maybe a little bit heavy for this image right now. We'll just do this quick. I'll leave it at 0.7, but you can see that's with it on, that's with it off back on, back off. So this might even be hard to see with like YouTube compression and stuff, but this is all about just bringing out a little bit of fine detail at 100%. And I would be happy with that as it is. So I'll get, go ahead and compress that. And then the final thing that I'm gonna do, and this is really important, is proofing this image. And this is all about just trying to get the best idea of what it's gonna look like once it's printed. So to do this, we're gonna use an ICC profile. If we go back to Whitewall's website here, uh, they have ICC profiles for all of their papers, which is really nice. So I went and downloaded this uh, Canson Brita, put that into my ColorSync folder on a Mac, and then if I go up here in Photoshop to View, Proof Setup, Custom, you'll see it's already loaded up here under Device to Simulate, just because that's what I was working with last when I prepped these for print. And then I have Simulate Paper Color checked. So this is with it on, and this is with it off and this is with it back on. So you can see these like really dark areas here lose a little bit of that separation. They start to look a bit muddy if we put it off here and then we put it back on. So this is likely just due to like my processing style. There's a lot of times where you run a uh, ICC profile and you won't really have to do anything. But in this situation, I probably just would have gone and added a curves layer and just tr with uh, viewing this with that ICC profile active, just tried to maybe bring a little bit of those dark areas back. This is gonna be really quick here. So that's with the curves layer on, that's with it off, 
that's where the back on. So you can see it does bring a little bit more separation to those real dark areas there. But this is always minimal, my adjustments afterwards with ICC profiles. But the point of this is running one of these, again, just to get kind of the best idea possible about what this is going to look like once it's printed. And this is important, especially if you're dealing, again, with you know black and white work like this, with these really kind of subtle tone changes. You know, you don't wanna lose that in the final print. And that's it, so this one is flattened, be ready to save it as a TIFF file and send it off to print. And this is the exact uh, steps that I would have taken for each one of those images. So just sizing, border, sharpen, proofing, really straightforward, but even just using these simple steps, it is gonna help you make sure that when you get your images back from the printer, they look as close as possible to what you see on your screen. So when all the images showed up, I gotta say, I was really happy with that Canson paper choice. And as expected, it was such a nice change to see all of this work printed as a whole. I'd done a few selects in the past, but to take all 15 that I had so far, uh, print them at the same time as a collection, and then have them live inside this nice portfolio box has been pretty satisfying and a nice way to view the work. I will say though, after doing this now and kind of selecting this print size, if I had a do-over, I probably would drop down just a little bit smaller than this, maybe to something like 12 by 16, just because I like the idea of making it maybe a little bit more cost effective. So if I do change my mind in the future with the final project, uh, it's a little bit easier to swallow the costs of say a 12 by 16 or a eight by 10 image versus uh, a 16 by 20. You know, but overall, I am really happy with how this turned out. It's something I could definitely see myself doing uh, for some of my other projects as well. And I will say like more than ever lately, I've been feeling pretty like dissatisfied of viewing work on a computer, especially, you know, like shooting say large format or on like medium format digital and then looking at photographs on like a tiny little phone screen, it feels like just leaving so much behind. So I love the idea of having these portfolio boxes that sit on like a shelf or a cabinet, you add to them as you go, and then you just pull them out from time to time and flip through the work, and also just as a way to share it with someone else. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this one and that it inspires you to get out there and print your work just in any way. You know, if that's like a smaller portfolio box, if that's four by six work prints. And I know for me personally with this project, uh, it excites me to like know when I'm away on a trip now in the future, if I make an image or two that I'm happy with, I can send them away for print, I get them back, I can add them to this collection and kind of watch it grow as the project develops. So yeah, anyways, that's it for this one. Um, just wanna say, as always, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.